Are you a deviant? You know, like those of us who binge watch serial killer programs, laugh at the stupid shit people do, and revel in anything adult? Well, you've found your people. Join us as we crack open the door to the padded cell and release the insanely stupid, the weirdly wonderful, and those who choose to live outside societal norms. We'll delve into the strange, the macabre, the sexy, and the outrageous. So if you're a deviant, then you've found a place with us in the padded cell. Well, it's episode three of The Padded Cell. Are we excited? I think I think so. I'm a little, a little bit scared, nervous. you know. Yeah. <sighs> because our first reel just went a little bit nuts, didn't it? Yeah. And um, I was really, really surprised. Thank you, everybody, that uh, has shown the love and support for us since the first reel and uh, podcasts went out. I just wasn't expecting um, 2.3 million people <laughs> to watch our first reel. And I've had people contacting me from, like, school saying... I saw you talking on a podcast about dick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, yeah, that's what I do now. <laughs> yeah. Where have you been? <laughs> um, but yeah, all the comments. We've had loads and loads of great feedback on email and on Instagram. Thank you, everybody, for the great feedback. Uh, and we've had some trolls as well, which is great because a they've been bumping trolls. up our ratings. Yeah. So keep trolling. Thank you to them as well. Yeah, thank you to them. <laughs> um, good job we've got a thick skin as all as I can say, Nance, because... Yeah. Um, like a pair of lizards. A pair of lizards, a tumour yeah. um, and dried steak. <laughs> I love steak. Um, so yeah, but you know what? We have got thick skin. The industry that we're in, uh, we're used to getting all this hails at us. Um, and I just take with a pinch of salt. And like I've just said, you're bumping up our raisins and everything. So cheers. <laughs> um, I was thinking about doing a little troll corner every now and then I of all the should. best comments. Yeah. Because obviously these people uh, want the exposure. So I might just give it to you. Um, so try harder with the comments and you might just get a, a little bit of a mention. And a name and shame. A name and shame. Yeah. User 239. Because <laughs> they're, they're too scared to hide behind. Well, that's it, yeah. And some of them haven't even got like a profile picture no. or anything. Like, yeah, thanks for your shit comments. Maybe like put a little photo on there so I can see who you are. I can look into your eyes. <laughs> So yeah, thanks um, and, and keep it up and please do contact us. Some of the emails I've had have been absolutely lovely, really reassuring, some from other podcasters as well, which is really, really nice. Um, it's just good to know that we're, um, we're doing something right. Because I was, I was a bit a, different. A bit different. Because I was a bit unsure. I was doing this thinking, this is really great. I'm having a lovely time. And then I thought, <laughs> everybody else thinks it's it. shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's all good. So uh, what have you been up to, Nance? Um, I've just got back from London. I okay. had a little weekend in Camden. Was it um, a naughty weekend or it was a family weekend? It was a, a very vanilla weekend, but it was okay. fun. Vanilla's good every now and then. It can't be filthy all the time. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's little bits of filth in between the family we, time. You we tried. Got in there. I know yeah. you and your husband. We did try. No, it was really nice. Um, Camden's our favourite place it to go. Lovely, so we spend a lot of time there. So it was nice to just switch off for the weekend. Cool. Not as wild as your time away. No, I've not long come back from Benidorm. Now, I know you're going to judge me. There's some people out there that are going to think, I thought you were cool and you've, <laughs> you've just come back from Benidorm. But, you know, Benidorm is like this sort of uh, ecosystem in its own right. And every now and then you've just got to join the masses and just hit the fuck it button <laughs> and, and let yourself go. I mean, we went for Pride, for Benidorm Pride specifically. And that in itself was just, fantastic um it's the best pride i've ever been to yeah it was like manchester pride on the the best drugs you can get um everybody was just went all out it was amazing um but we were there for the whole week we went all around the area different not just in benidorm but we stayed in the old town which is also gay town mm -hmm. and you can just sit there with a pint and they give you free nibbles as well which is nice and you can just watch people for hours and you just see the best people dressed in the most outrageous costumes being the living their best life yeah. so it was it was great um but i've come back needing a liver transplant uh, <laughs> as you know talks. i don't drink that much i've tried to like curb it a little bit um but you know everybody drinks in benadorm and so yeah. i just went along for the ride and yeah and now i really need to not drink for a long time <laughs> <laughs> you know you've got like have you ever had a pain in your liver yeah. from drinking too much I've not had that for a little while but day five I was like oh, God, I've got a bit of a pain I wonder if it's Neither wind they are. no it's me liver yeah yeah. so I mean, it was great we had a lot of cocktails in Camden mm. but I don't think any, anywhere on your level 
What's your favourite cocktail? At the minute, an amaretto sour. Why? Love it. Is it strong? It's not strong, no. I think I don't particularly love the taste of alcohol, so I need to like blend it a little bit. So I need it needs to... to taste like a soft drink to be palatable. Not necessarily a soft drink, but there needs to be a sweetness, not like, you know, yeah. that ugh. Yeah. See, I like the ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, like, I like to taste my vodka. Mm. I used to drink gin, didn't I? I'm a bit more vodka nowadays. And I like a good quality vodka and yeah. a lot of it. So my favourite is a Kuiper Oscar, which like is a, a massive shot of good grey goose vodka with like crushed lime, crushed ice, bit of sugar. And it's strong as fuck and it's mm. dead, dead nice, but it's really easy to drink. So I was just drinking loads of Kuiper Oscar in Benidorm, having a lovely time. And my liver was like, no! So Too much. Gonna, yeah. So anyway... Um, should we crack on with what we're going to do today? Yeah, because we've, I'm we've sure we've got our tea to detox. So yeah, we have. It's a very nice cup of tea as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're going to go along with the same format as last time. I'm going to yeah. tell a little story. Then we're going to have a little thing, a little bit in the middle, and then you're going to tell your story. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to. I'm not going to say what it is. I'm just going to talk, and then you can guess. Okay. Okay. Let's go. So, on the 1st of April 1974, in a little place called Sitka in Alaska, um, the people of the town woke up on a beautiful, sunny, bright morning, looking over to Mount Edgecombe, which was a dormant volcano and had been dormant for about 400 years. But it was smoking. There was smoke billowing out the top of it and, and quite frankly, they shit themselves. They thought, <laughs> oh God, it's, it's erupting. As you would. As you do. And uh, soon enough, you know, the people were, were phoning up the local authorities, you know, the volcanoes erupting, the police, all that, and, and the local Coast Guard. Now, the Coast Guard also shit, and um, they phoned their admiral and went, um, hey, dude, the uh, Mount Edgecombe's smoking. Um, what should we do? So he was like, uh, oh, let's send a helicopter out. So they sent a helicopter out, flew right over the crater, and the pilot's looking down in disbelief at what he can see. And what he can see is a massive pile of burning tyres in this crater. <laughs> in this big fucking volcano. It's not like easily accessible. And written in 50 foot high black letters is April Fool. <laughs> so somebody had gone to an awful lot of effort to play this big massive prank. So who did this and why? So... Um, Unsurprisingly, um, this was the brainchild of a guy, he's a 50-year-old guy, who likes to call himself Porky. So his real name is Oliver Bicker, but everybody used to call him Porky. So we're going to call him Porky, okay. just because it's a bit easier. And he planned this thing three years before. I'm like, OK, so I mean, it's a big thing to pull off, but three years, really? But actually, it was because he needed perfect weather conditions to pull it off. <laughs> um because you obviously just can't just walk up there. You need to fly it up there. It's got to be good conditions. So he'd put it off. But in the meantime, he'd been collecting his tyres in an old aircraft hangar. So he'd been like, you know, um, hiding them away. 70 tyres he'd, he'd been hiding away. Nobody had seen him hiding these tyres. Nobody had clocked onto him whatsoever in these three years. It's obviously very good. And uh, on this particular day, he woke up and he went away. Uh, Mrs. Porky, the, the weather <laughs> is perfect. I think I'm going to do it today. And so he said, right, I'm going to do this. And you know what the wife said? I know what I would say. If, if Jim said to me, I'm going to pull this thing off, which is going to scare a whole town of people and possibly cost a lot of money. I'd be like, no, Jim, we're going to get in into jail. trouble. <laughs> yeah. But she said to quote, okay, just don't make an ass of yourself. So she's more worried about his ego. Not like, you know, frightening all these people in the town. So anyway, he says, right, I'm going to go and I'm going to call around uh, a few of my mates that have got helicopters. I don't know how many people you know have got a helicopter, but Porky had three friends. I think we need new friends. I know, yeah, mile high. <laughs> um, so he, he's got three friends and uh, who've got helicopters, three of them point blank obviously had the same thought as me. I was like, hell no, <laughs> I'm not doing that no. shit. Um, but uh, one guy went, do you know what, yeah? Let, let's do it. I've got nothing else on and I've, I've filled the tank up. Uh, so, yeah, let, let's go and pull this prank. So uh, he gets his helicopter uh, sorted. And in the meantime, Porky's thinking, well, I've got 70 tyres to load up. I can't do it on my own. So I'm going to um, call the help of Harry, Larry and Ken. 
me mates who call themselves the Dirty Dozen. And obviously nobody's told them what a dozen means. There's just three of them. So Harry, Larry, Ken and the um, and, and the helicopter guy have basically hit the fuck it button and went, yeah, let, let's do this. And they get this big, massive piece of canvas that they can hook up onto the, onto the helicopter, load half the tyres up and they off they go to, to the crater of Mount Edgecombe offload all the tyres. Then they go off to get the second lot. In the meantime, Porky's trampling the snow to make these big letters and spray painting April Fool into it. I don't know how many kinds of spray paint he had. They also took up uh, a load of um, kerosene, rags, some smoke bombs, just, you know, for additional effect. And then the, the rest of them came back. They piled it all up, set fire to it. They probably shit themselves at this point because soaked tyres and kerosene, yeah. I'm sure, went up pretty quickly. But they did it anyway and legged it. But, I mean, Porky, he did have a little bit of a consideration, you know, for the infrastructure of the town. And before they did this, they alerted the local police uh, and the FAA and, and a few other, um, uh, whatever, I can't think of the word, but he didn't tell the Coast Guard. So on the way back from the, the setting fires to tyres, the FAA radioed through and said, just letting you know, guys, you have clearance. And by the way, that son of a bitch looks fantastic. <laughs> now, really, I think the FAA would be like, you really shouldn't be doing this. You yeah. know, I am taking no part in this whatsoever. But no, he's like, that son of a bitch looks fantastic. So he was well on board. So... <clears throat> Anyway, they're, they're, they're on the way back. The FAA is all okay with it. The, the Coast Guard shitting themselves. <laughs> um, but then, obviously, um, they, they realise that it's, it's a prank. It's a big, massive April Fool. And Porky is like, yes, we've pulled off this great thing. But how did the local people feel about this when, when like, you know, they got back? So the local people actually were very quite positive about it and they must have very quiet lives because I would be fuming. If I would, I, I'd be like piling all my stuff into the car, Let's getting go. all the kids Grab and the, the kids dog. Out of bed. And I'd be like, we're getting out of Dodge because we're going to be, you know, set on fire and, and made into like you know, lava statues. <laughs> um, but no, they were actually all right about it. Um and even the local Coast Guard, I mean, it would have cost them a few quid. They've sent a helicopter out, probably got the, ad the Admiral out of bed. But they were all right. And even the Admiral, Paul, he met him a few years later, a 4th of July party. And um, he thought he was going to get his ear chewed out. But the Admiral came over to him and said, Do you know what, that prank was classic. I mean, how nice, how nice are these I people? I they remember it. Yeah. I mean, I've heard that the Alaskans are nice, to be mm -hmm. honest. Um, and... The far, and Canadians like far too nice but I mean they've pulled off this thing that's cost a lot of money and and they're all right about it I mean that wouldn't happen here no you'd, you'd be in jail you'd be in jail wouldn't you there'd be absolute anarchy so anyway the story reached outlets around the world and Porky became really famous and Alaskan Airlines even used him in their marketing campaign <laughs> I mean, it was just like a few hours of fun and he was known for years over this. But my best little stories have come out of all of this and Porky's little favourite story as well. In 1980, which was several years afterwards, he received a letter from the attorney in Denver and inside the clipping was a clipping from the Denver Post and it was a picture of Mount St. Helens erupting, which must be in Denver. Mm -hmm. And attached was a note that read, this time, you little bastard, you've gone too far. <laughs> <laughs> so I just thought that was a cracking little April Fool's story. Um, and from that, uh, I found a few others. But what do you think of Porky? I think it's a lot of effort for an April Fool. It is. And what would you do if you were his wife? Would you be as nice? Well, I think all husbands do really stupid stuff, don't they? They do, but I mean... It's like part of the job of a husband, I think, is just to piss your wife off. That's up there, though, isn't it? It is. It's it bit, is. It's a bit dramatic. Now, I have got a little picture of this mountain erupting, which, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see this. But I'm just going to show it to Nance now. It looks really <laughs> it real. Does. If you woke up in the morning and saw that, you'd genuinely think the mountain was erupting, yeah. wouldn't you? Grab the kids, let's grab go. Grab the kids, grab the dog... Few essentials, couple of sex toys, and, and I'm Ken. off. I'm out of dodge. Yeah. Yeah. So he pulled it off, and it was really, really convincing, wasn't it? So what? What other April Fools' pranks have been pulled over the years? Now there's 
thousands. And most of them have been instigated by the media, media mm-hmm. stunts. Um, some of them have just like just been people. And I'm going to just read out some of the, the best that I've found. Okay. okay. Now, the first one, I know that you're going to like this. Because I think it was episode one, we were talking about the penis museum. Yeah. And you said that you'd love a little hamster penis. I just want to see you. You just want to see you. So this April Fool about Viagra for a hamsters. <laughs> but um, it's, it's actually animals in general, but the, the head is Viagra for hamsters. So in uh, April, April 1st, 2000, the Independent reported that Florida researchers had developed a Viagra-like pill to treat sexually frustrated pets, <laughs> including <laughs> hamsters. Vets were said to have greeted the news with derision. Obvs. But the article pointed out that there are a few things, no fewer things as sad as a pet suffering from feelings of sexual inadequacy. Right? It actually said this. It's not unknown for a guinea pig to sit in its cage thinking, I haven't had sex for months, I'm so unattractive. <laughs> <laughs> this is in the article and people read it and went, ah. Oh. <laughs> Poor guinea pigs. Right, so owners were instructed to simply grind the pills up and sprinkle them in the pet's food. Aww. Laying some newspaper down on the floor once the pills began to take effect. <laughs> and the best bit, the pills were marketed under the name Feral Moan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I was howling. Feral Moan. I mean, it's not real, but I mean, if it was, what a name. Would you buy that for your dog? Um, well, my dog's female, but... My, my dog that died, Brillo, he didn't need it. He was a randy little fucker. <laughs> uh, we had to get him done because he was just too much. And then he calmed down a little bit. But it was funny because he'd be in the general vicinity of Luna, our other dog. And it didn't matter what end. He just started dry hump in the air <laughs> around his face, around his bum, around his paws. Anything could do. Poor, Poor dog. Luna. I know, yeah. So the next one, the world will end tomorrow. So now this is 1940, this happened. And I'm reading this thing. If this happened now, literally every shop, John Lewis would be oh, yeah, be lucid. Yeah. So on the 31st of March, 1940, Philadelphia's Franklin Institute issued a press release declaring the world would end the following day, April 1st. The release was then picked up by a local radio station. It was obviously a little bit gullible. Mm-hmm. And they announced the listeners, your worst fears that the world will end are confirmed by astronomers of the Franklin Institute. Scientists predict that the world will end at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. And this is no April Fool joke. So the public went apeshit, right? N- not like 2023 apeshit, you know, obviously no phone, mobile phones and stuff. But, you know, they were phone. I don't know why, when they hear things like this, they phone the authorities. I, I mean, if the world's going to end, they're going to go... Yeah, yeah, the world's going to end. I don't yeah. really know what you want me to do about I'm it. I'm not going into work today. That's it, phone them in. So anyway, um, the panic only subsided after Franklin Institute repeatedly assured everyone that I had made no such prediction. And it was a prankster uh, who worked for a press release department called William Castellini. Um, and he'd intended to use the fake release to publicise on April the 1st a lecture at the Institute titled, How Will the World End? So he just thought, you know what, as part of this little lecture, we'll put a press release out and, and it'll just add to this lecture. No, dude, it got you sacked. <laughs> they sacked him there and then. <laughs> but I mean, even though they didn't have mobile phones and, you know, the way we can like connect with each other now, that still would have, you know, amounted still gonna cause to hysteria, panic isn't it? and people jumping in the cars. And yep. I'm sure, you know, that the highways were like chocker. What part of this did William Castellini you think would be fun? Because he got himself the sack and caused a huge amount of panic. Yep. And I did think if that was now, the high streets would just be lucid, wouldn't it? And yeah. everybody be killing each other. It's like the purge. Yeah. If the world's going to end tomorrow, I'm going to go around and kill my ex. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kill off gonna all the people that I don't like. I'm gonna get there first. Yeah, I'm gonna look in their eyes and do it before yeah. the world ends. That's what would happen now. So the next one is about smell o vision. Ew. Okay. Now I think that isn't this like some cinemas around the world or something that are pumping out smells or something. Yes, yeah, so you can go to places now and they're like, if there's certain foods on the film and stuff, they'll pump the smell and all different senses. So you're not gonna like get the smell of sex or lust or nothing like that. I mean, it wouldn't be very Lube nice, it would be authentic, no. wouldn't it? Lube and bum, e. Okay, so, smell-o-vision. 
April 1st, 1965, the BBC interviews a London University professor who perfected a technology called smell vision that allowed the transmission of smells over the airwaves. I mean, some smells I wouldn't want to smell. No. Viewers would be able to smell aromas produced in the tele- television studio in their own homes. So he explained how it worked, which I'm not going to go into it. But he asked viewers uh, to report if they could smell anything. And he placed some coffee beans and onions in front of this smell vision machine that he created. And the power of suggestion this is, isn't it? Numerous viewers called in from across the country to confirm that they had distinctly smelled coffee. Of course they do. I mean, they're probably making coffee. <laughs> but some even claim that the onions made their eyes water. <laughs> how stupid. Proper did, placebo. How stupid did they feel when they realised that it was a prank and smell vision wasn't a thing? Yeah. But I decided to, to research this, to look into actually, is smell vision going to be a thing? And I think the technology to bring it to our TV sets at, at, at home isn't there. No. I don't know whether it'll ever be there. But there is um, some um, stuff going on in China where all the best stuff happens tech-wise. It's always in China. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're just so bloody clever with this, aren't they? Um, and the, the development of VR set. So when you're playing games or whatever, it can emit certain smells to obviously immerse you into the experience even more. So they're not like, you know... If you're, if you're playing, like, um, a, a game that's, like, killing off people, it's not going to emit blood. Like Resident Evil, dead yeah, flesh. Yeah, exactly, yeah, zombie smells. But we're talking, like, you know, flowers and certain, like, drink smells, mm-hmm. maybe, for now. Uh, I think they look at, like, 25 different smells. But I think that's pretty awesome. You know, if you've got your VR on and, you know, you're, you're playing a game and you yeah. can smell what's going on as well as hear and see it, I think it's pretty awesome, really. Yeah. So even though that smell vision thing was a prank in, what was it, 1965, um, in 2023, it could actually be a thing. Could be a real thing. Yeah. So my next one, um, I'm not going to say the title of this. Okay. Because I think, do you like serial killer stuff like me? Yeah. Okay, so you, you, you Probably might... not as crazy as you do. No, but... um, I listen to all sorts of serial killer podcasts and stuff, yeah. but you might recognise this name. Okay. So in April 1st, 1971, the Texas House of Representatives unanimously passed a resolution, unanimously passed a resolution, honouring Albert DeSalvo, noting he had been officially recognised by the state of Massachusetts for his noted activities and unconventional techniques involving population (laughs) control and applied (laughs) psychology. The Texas politicians were very embarrassed when it was later revealed to them that DeSalvo was better known as the Boston Strangler. He had confessed to killing 13 women. The resolution had been submitted by representatives Tom Moore and Lane Denton, who said they did it to demonstrate that no one reads these bills and resolutions. <laughs> <laughs> How embarrassing, though. I mean, if you're good at something, get recognised for it. A serial killer, yeah. 13 people. But it's like, oh my God, how did they not know who Albert DeSalvo was? I mean, it was around the time as well yeah. that he was notorious. Oh, that's just crazy, man. So my next one, it reminds me of my mate, Alex. Uh, you know, Alex. Mm-hmm. Um, this is about the Norwegian wine surplus, right? Okay. April 1st, 1950, Norway's largest newspaper announced on its front page that the government owned uh, business, the wine monopoly, had received a large shipment of wine, barrel, wine in barrels, but had, had run out of bottles. And to get rid of the extra wine, the stores run on a one day bargain sale, offering wine at 75% off and tax free. <laughs> The catch was that the buyers had to bring their own containers to bring the wine in. So I'm envisioning my mate Alex, who loves wine. She she drinks wine in boxes. She's mm-hmm. just not that fussy. She would like take a water butt <laughs> with like a little tap on it. <laughs> Paddling pool. She really would. But I've got a picture. And again, those who are watching us on YouTube can see this picture. And so people queued up with buckets. Like, there they are, look. Desperate. They've got like massive, massive buckets. Um, yeah, so they go and get their free wine and they were standing there for ages, 10 o'clock in the morning with their buckets. Nothing happened. And then they quickly realised that it was a prank and they'd launched their buckets. So it's literally like buckets just tossed in the streets by fuming Norwegians. I said, just go to the pub over the road. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And my last one is the best. And it's, it's a Brit. So, um, in March 2007, um, a guy called Dan um, posted images, uh, an eight-inch 
uh, image of a winged creature. He had explained that a, a man walking his dog in Derbyshire had found this thing. Now, all right, let's just backtrack a minute. You've got a dog. I have. Every fucking dead body, um, missing person, any anything at all, are found by a dog walker. And I said to Jim not long ago, I'm going to write a book about the tales of a dog walker because mm-hmm. I bet your bottom dollar there's loads and loads of bodies that have been found and dodgy shit by dog walkers Probably. because we always go off piece, don't we, into forests yeah. and stuff where dead bodies are found. <laughs> well, this, this dog walker, he did find a dead body. It was a mummified fairy, right? And he, he took it um, to this guy, Dan, because he was a paranormal expert in the area. Mm-hmm. So what was it? Uh, Bain speculated that it was a mummified fairy um, and because the internet loves a mystery, the images went viral. I've got a picture. Okay, let's boss this. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see this. I think it's really good. Wow. The lengths people are going to for these um, April 1st pranks, you know, like dumping um, tyres in a mountain and making this like fairy. So it went viral and tens of thousands of people visited um, the, this website um, every single day. Um, and people were wrote in saying that they, they claimed to find uh, found similar creatures. Like, yeah, all right. Of course. Yeah, jumped on the bandwagon there. Um, and others went nuts because they'd revealed the location of this fairy because he could have like, you know, disturbed a little fairy nest or something. <laughs> Do you know there's some mad people out there, isn't there? Yeah. God loved them. Just want to give them a little hug. Um, but anyway, um, he, he admitted that uh, the whole thing was a hoax and he'd made the fairy himself and he was actually a professional prop maker. That's, how, that's why it was that good. good. It was fucking good. Um, but the public's fascination um, with this creature refused to die and many rejected his confession, saying that it was a cover-up to hide the real <laughs> truth. <laughs> you lie. Anyway... Um, Several years later, because of this continuing interest in this mummified fairy, this Dan Baines, he's made a bloody business out of it. You know, you just love people who think laterally. He's made a business. He started this Kickstarter fund, like a crowdfund. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, if you donate so much money, um, I'll I'll give you this. And if you donate 450 quid, I'll give you this. So it started off, if you donate a fiver, I'll give you the postcard of the original found mummified fairy. But if you give me £450, I'll come to your house with a, a, a mummified fairy making kit and we'll make a mummified fairy together and I'll give you loads of postcards and DVDs and I'll sign it and everything. Loads of people bought these kits. He made like nine and a half grand. What are you going to do with it? I have no idea. You just make this little fairy and then what? Maybe they'll dump them in forests and say, look, there's a dead fairy <laughs> and, and make a load of money themselves. I don't know. But through reading all of this... The main thing that like came to me was like how gullible people are and the length that people are going to go to to prank others. Um, but also like some of these things have cost the people loads of money or cost the state loads yeah. of money. Either way, do we really think April Fool's jokes should happen really? Because some of these are going a little bit too far, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, I don't think I've ever been... I've, I've ever had that much enthusiasm for April Fool's. Have you ever been pranked? No, not really. Not even as a kid in school? No. no, no. I, I did prank somebody in work. It's, it's a really long story. It's not really like that interesting, but I was quite proud of myself. <laughs> I didn't cost any money. I caused a little... It did actually cause some tears. Oops. I was a little bit guilty. That's when I, kept, that's when I fessed up because I can't do tears. Like, oh, please don't cry. <laughs> um, but I was dead proud of myself. I've never actually been pranked to that level myself. No. Don't bother, okay? That, that, on that I, note, that is not an invitation to be a dick and prank me. That's a challenge. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not. You're not getting your own uh, section on the podcast for pranking me, so no. So what do you think of our prankers then? I think they've got too much time on the hands. I thought that. I've yeah. not got enough time for this shit. No. We, we mean, don't have a lot of time for much. No, we don't have a lot of time. But, I mean, making the mummified fairy, that wasn't a two-minute job. When no. you saw that picture, that took a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. And then three years' worth of stockpiling tyres. <laughs> That's dedication, isn't it? Where the hell did you put them? He said it in an aircraft hangar, but nobody saw them. I mean, maybe it's Alaska, isn't it? There's a lot of space yeah. and people just don't see what's going on. Apparently, there's a lot of dead people in Alaska. It's like murder central. I'm going back to one of my other murder podcasts yeah. that I'll listen to. You know too much. I know, I do know too much. <laughs> 
So there you go. That's our first bit about April Fools. Do you know what? I did actually read. I was trying to find the origin in April Fools, and there's uh, there's nothing. They don't actually know the origins. They know that there was people in the Middle Ages that were pranking each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but they reckon that it could go back like to Roman times and stuff. And they're not sure, you know, it's all hearsay and really not too sure. But the actual origins of why that date and why people play jokes on people, no idea. But it's like a worldwide thing. Yeah. It's not just like, you know, Western civilization. People from all over the world are pranking each other on April 1st. And we don't know why. But I mean, that's just a few stories out Maybe of thousands. Maybe someone knows. Yeah, if you know. Let it. us know. Yeah. Let and, us in the secret. And, and don't joke about it. <laughs> Okay, so moving on from there. My middle bit. The middle bit. So the middle bit um, is something completely different, off topic, um, just to bridge our bits between me and Nance. Mm -hmm. Now, you might get a little bit of a reaction to this. Okay. I'm just going to get my tissue. Yeah. Just ready, just in case. Okay. You might guess where it's going because of that. Okay. Okay. Do I need my tissue? (coughs) It might do. It depends how emotional (laughs) you're feeling. Oh God! It's just one. It's been a long stories, weekend, you know. I know. <laughs> Do you know? It's like if if we cry, are we just gonna like carry on? Yeah. Like cut, cut. <laughs> I need to take a break. Okay, Fine. so this is this is a story told by a guy in America, and I'm gonna tell it as he tells it okay. for maximum effect rather than ad lib. Are we ready? Let's go. So I was loitering with a couple of friends in a little village style outdoor mall that's pretty popular in my city. Without warning, a massive group of people turned the corner onto the street and started walking down it together at a brisk pace. Not a flash mob, no one shirtless, just a group of what had to be three or four hundred people walking together. And as they're walking, the ones on the fringes of the train are calling out to passers-by to join in. There's no indication of where the group is going or why, and no one is explaining to themselves or holding signs or anything. They're just going with the flow. Is this like power suggestion thing mm-hmm. that I was talking about before? They're just like curious and just... I mean, you probably would join just to see. I would. I would. I mean, they could be going to the death, couldn't they? But I would. I'd have, I'd have to. Curiosity killed the cat. Also Curiosity on. killed Vic. <laughs> so, we're near the end of the street, watching more and more people latch onto the group and out of sheer curiosity as it moves en masse towards us, I said, fuck it, let's go. My kind of guy. Yeah. So we tacked onto the side of the train and followed it for 10 minutes or so into the heart of the mall, where there's a small park with a sculpture garden and a fountain. By that point, there were way too many people to come close to fitting in the park. I'd estimate at least a goddamn thousand packed in there together. The guy who was leading the parade approached this young woman who was sitting on one of the benches there, who was looking pretty bewildered at being surrounded by hundreds of strangers. Another young guy who was with him, sort of a ringleader type, turned to face us as a group and started shout singing, lean on me. With no idea what was going on, the rest of the group, all a thousand of us, joined in until there were enough people to fill an auditorium, all singing, lean on me together to this complete stranger of a girl in the park. We got about a minute in to the end of the second chorus before the guy's friend raised both hands and went, shh, and everyone went silent. I mean, the crowd control, Canel. Then the guy who was leading the parade got down on one knee and proposed to the girl. She said yes, and everyone cheered and basically dispersed. And that was that. I would die. It's one of my favourite memories just because of the sense of being part of something greater. For no reason except that we're all human. With no idea where we were going or why, we still joined the parade of people and sang to this guy's wife-to-be because it was a good thing to do. I did it without tears. <laughs> I read this after gym. I think it was like last night. I was like, oh, how am I going to do this without crying? I was like emotional mess, but I'm just a little bit glossy, but that's it. Now, my little heart of stone is okay. Uh, Would you like that? I don't know. That would be my worst nightmare, I think. I'm I'm quite personal with things like that. So I think um, a thousand people watching me, I'd be under pressure. I mean, what do you want to say no? I'd say no anyway. He must have been pretty certain she was going to say yeah. (laughs) Imagine though, the shame. Nope. (laughs) But lean on me. That's quite cute. Does it not even get you a little bit? No. Fucking hell, you callous. I am dead inside. 
<laughs> There's definitely a swinging brick where your heart should be. There wasn't nothing. I, I was reading. I, when the first time I read it, I was like, this is going to be a proposal, isn't it? And I couldn't even get to the end. I was like, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And I wanted to be in the crowd going, lean on me, swaying <laughs> and just being part of this thing. Would you be in the crowd? I'd be there. Yeah. Like inside, I'm sure I'd be thrilled for them. Okay. But, but you no. wouldn't want to be the person. That fills me with dread thinking, imagine that was me. I would die. Well, she seemed to like it and, and she said, yeah. And he must have known that she was you know, going to say yeah and she didn't enjoy it. Yeah. Or, or maybe she was or like... Or maybe he thought she might say no, but this will make her say yes. Ooh. She can't say no in front <gasps> of all them people. Oh, now I'm, I'm now thinking completely different about this. <laughs> you might have just spoiled that a little bit. I'm thinking he's a, he's a romantic, but he's actually a psychopath. <laughs> oh, fuck, Nance. <laughs> You've just killed me off. Oh. There you go. Okay, well, uh, do you know what? The next time there's a crowd saying, just join in, I'm going to join in and hope that they're not leading to me death and, yeah. and I'm going to go and watch somebody being proposed to. Oh, my Sing Singing and lean on me. I'm going to bring the best singing voice and everything. <laughs> so there you go. That was me so a little bit that. in the middle. A nice little story there. It was. Yeah. All right, so what have you got for us, Nance? We've got a little bit of a history lesson. <gasps> I like a bit of history, you know me. But it's a fun history. So okay. it's the history of the sex toy. Ah, my favourite subject. So I think everyone's got their favourites. All different types of sex toys and stuff that are available these days. Yes. I mean, there's a massive amount of sex toys now, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. I think there's much, too much of a choice. Can be a little bit like a kid in a sweet shop, can't you? Now? I mean, if you, you, if you walk into scandals. scandals or, you know, Antomas and stuff and it's just, there's so much variety that you want everything. Yeah. But, you know, you've got your trusty old dildos down to... You know, we've got Sibians, mm -hmm. fuck machines, all sorts. Are you going to tell us about the history of these things? Mm, maybe not the Sibian. Okay. Um, so we had a look and seen how far back, how old do you think the oldest dildo is? So the dildo is like the oldest sex toy. Okay, so bearing in mind that people have probably been, um, I was going to say masturbating, but wanking off basically, uh, forever. That's yeah, forever. Um, and I'm sure it didn't take them long to figure out that, you know, there's more than just the hand. Yeah. So I would say a very, very, very long time ago, like ancient history. Go on. Yeah, pretty much. So the oldest recorded toy is 28,000 years old and it's from the stone, from the ice age. Made wow. of stone. I was going to say made of ice. It wouldn't <laughs> last long, would it? <laughs> Depends how warm you go. Um, but yeah, imagine. Wow. Obviously, there's a lot of things that you can use as a dildo. I wouldn't use stone. No, me neither. So it was found in 2005. So it's only, it's not really that old okay. that it's been. So they only found. found it recently? Yeah. Is this because it was in like permafreeze somewhere in Siberia or something? Well, it was actually in Germany. Oh, okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'll give it a go in the, the Swabian Jura. Swabian Jura. It's a mountain range in Germany. Okay. Um, it was in like a little cave or something? A little sex cave? Yeah, pretty much. And it was in pieces, so it's been reconstructed. Um, so, okay. It was a stone dildo. Yeah. Was it like smoothed off or was it ribbed for effect? Well, who knows? Oh, chiseled. I mean, there's a lot of things. I bet, yeah, right. Because it was like a long time ago and they weren't that experienced in sex toys, it was probably just long and bad probably shaped, rough, isn't it? wasn't it? Whereas now... You know, if you were going to chisel a sex toy out of stone, you'd have it all like nobbled and all yeah. sorts of, you know, shapes and sizes for your personal delight. Yeah. I mean, you get some knobbly ones these days. You do, yeah. I wouldn't have a stone one though. No. That chafe. I wouldn't want I a mean, stone. what would you use for lube? Spit. I mean, back then you'd have to use spit, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, a little bit of like seal grease. <laughs> <laughs> Whack on the seal grease and then... <laughs> Play yourself with a stone dildo. Yeah. I mean, I'm aroused. What can I say? So this one was eight inches long. So oh, okay. You know, a little bit more than average. Three Unless inches maybe thick. the guys then were more than average and they just fashioned it on, on the average guy. You never know. Or maybe they just wanted a bit more. Might have a big wang. That was the history of stretching. <laughs> <laughs> oh, does it say, does it say how, how wide it was? Three inches. Three inches wide. Like, so it's quite girthy, isn't it? So like, like wasn't just the diameter. That was how wide, how it, was. wide it was. God, it was girthy, yeah. wasn't it? 
And obviously super hard because it's made of rock. Yeah. So, so when they found this old dildo, it's been broken into pieces. It's been reconstructed. Um, I don't know. There's a little bit of me that says, how do you know that's a dildo? Yeah. But apparently there's been tests. There's been, you know, all research and stuff done into it. And the scientists say this is a sex I want to know what tests. Because oh, I mean. Some, um, lots of different frozen dna yeah i don't know though Twenty eight thousand years ago yeah I mean, what fucking dna are you gonna have on, like, I mean, on a stone the ice age, so it's possibly like frozen being... in time mm. okay that's interesting that, yeah. that they know it's it a weird dildo. though yeah so i wonder if they found other like little dildos like a little collection maybe mm. different different sizes. shapes and sizes yeah, yeah. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, etc. i mean who are we to question google because that's what yeah that's what google says that's it isn't it yeah so okay. there's been um, obviously a massive range in sex toys in different cu cultures. Um, some of the oldest ones come from the Chinese. So the Chinese made butt plugs. Oh, I just, do you know what? I just love the innovation of the Chinese. Butt plugs and strap-ons was Sorry, their specialty. So when was this? This is going back to 220 AD. A long time ago? Yeah. So they were making butt plugs in China in 220 AD? Made the jade. bastards. Jade? Jade butt plugs. I bet you can get them now. Probably. Yeah. Probably cost you a bit. Shiny and pretty. Yeah. So apparently, you know, they, they started off as being a way for when someone's died. It's a plug. Literally a plug. Right. Sorry, my head went somewhere else then. I thought you were going to talk like necrophilia. I was like, whoa, Not hang yet. on. That's a different podcast, that, Nance. <laughs> that is a different podcast. <sighs> that is coming up soon. Ooh! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You got a bit too excited about that. I did, yeah. Yeah. So these were plugs oh, sorry, made of jade. Can I just like disclose that I'm not getting excited over necrophilia? I wow. mean, you just said yeah, and then you changed your mind. No, I'm not getting excited over necrophilia. <laughs> I'm just getting excited over the fact that it could be something to talk about in another podcast. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to like backtrack there. Maybe we'll cut that little bit out. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Oh, the trolls are going to be going, Eva, he likes to chag dead people. No, I don't. We're just talking about jade butt plugs in 220 AD. Go on. Yeah. So they were made, obviously, as plugs to begin with. for yes. um, To stop all the anal leakage. Oh, dear me. <laughs> There's few words that make me go, whoa, anal leakage is one yeah. of them, man. Dear me. Do you need we, a minute? I do just need a minute. <laughs> That's like when somebody gives you ketchup. You just go, oh, that was triggered. me. Yeah. Yeah. Anal leakage. Okay. So they quickly became from, obviously, I think it's got to be someone's looked at that and thought, I'll try that and give it a go. And then so off they went. It might have been somebody who likes a lot of bum fun. Yeah. And the sphincter's I'll, I'll probably a little bit worn out and isn't keeping the things in that it should do. And they're like, well, do you know what? It keeps the anal leakage uh, in when you die. So it might keep the anal leakage in while I'm alive and I can mm. carry on having bum fun. That's what's happened, I'm telling you. Yeah. Some dirty bastard who's getting lots of bum sex. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm saying dirty bastard, but, you know. Guilty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to apologise to me kids again. No. I've done that. We've had the conversation and they're cool. If mine are watching, turn it off. So I can say bum fun and they're going to be sound. Yeah. Okay. So they also made strap-ons. <gasps> the Chinese made the strap-ons. Yeah. Thank you, Chinese. So they're not made of jade. They were made of bronze. Can you imagine how much effort you need to put into that to carry a bronze? That'd be heavy. That's like putting a shift in, isn't it? That's going to put you back out a bit. Wow. Okay. That'd be, be really, really hang. Oh, you could make it cold though. Stick it in the fridge. Well, how long ago was this? 220 AD, I think a bit before the fridge. Oh, okay. Just stick it outside stick, then. Stick it's cold in, the in China <laughs> certain times of year. <laughs> yeah, like hot and cold sensation, what can I yeah. say? Okay, so a bronze strap on. Bronze strap on. What did they yeah. make the strap on out of? Just like leather, maybe? You know. I don't know, I didn't say. It just concentrated on the bronze. Okay. So. Nice. Okay. But I just can't imagine how heavy that is. No. I suppose fashioned as well. Did it say how big it was? Or did the Chinese have big dicks? No, I mean, well, Chinese are quite renowned for being smaller aren't they i don't know i don't know apparently okay i'm gonna get loads of chinese guys now and go lies Sorry. <laughs> in denial yeah um and you are now gonna get lots of dick pics from chinese guys with massive wangs in your inbox i mean just proving a point what's new yeah 
Yeah. Triggered all the Chinese guys now. What's new? Okay. Make sure they look good and they're clean. Yeah, d oh, and not on the There's toilet. nothing worse. Oh, when you can see the toilet bowl. Oh, uh, yeah. And we have stuff even flushed in it. it. Yeah. All it's, the time. I don't get why guys, one, one send unsolicited dick pics anyway, but it's always on the toilet and you can see the crusty undies around their ankles. They're sitting slightly back onto the Still seat so you can on. see down their legs into yeah. the bowl so you can see what was there. They're erect penis, and if they've really thought it through, they've got the sky remote in their hand next to it, so yeah. you can get a proper feel for how big it is or not. Yeah. Okay, is that our lives, that, by that the way? Is, that this is what we get a lot of. Yeah. A true reflection of my. Sorry, we digress. We did, but you know, triggered. Yeah. Go on. So dildos have been made from all sorts of materials. Yeah. Um, obviously, as time has progressed, they've probably t thought that'd make a good dildo. Um. So some of the most popular things were to make it from bones. Yeah, I can see bones, yeah. Probably where boner comes from. Yeah. Um, rocks, ivory, marble mm -hmm. and metal. So obviously most recently. Some of those are quite expensive products. Yeah. Like the ivory. Things like ivory and stuff, you know, yeah. they're probably. Yeah. See, I don't know how I feel about that. No. Um, I've got. I mean, I've... I'm an elephant lover, so. It's not for me. It's just like using animal bits in general, you know, and using animal bits for your personal pleasure. It just doesn't sit right <laughs> with me. You know, it it was, you know, attached to an elephant and, and now it's up my vag. No, no, no can't do it. Not no, for you. No. So have you heard of Ben Marbles? I think I can guess what they are. Like love eggs. Yeah. Okay. Pretty much. So they go inside mm -hmm. uh, in the vagina and they're made to bounce off each other come together i don't actually get get how they work i've never tried them and i've seen them in Ann summers and i'm like i just don't get it so i'm gonna pass so they're quite heavy mm -hmm. so when they go in they then bounce off each other as you move around so yeah. the idea is not for you to put them in and sit there and wait so you've got to do a little jig yeah put them in go and make a coffee go and do the macarena. Do, do what you want to do <laughs> with these balls in. And then every now and then they'll like bosh together. Yeah. And then you get sensation and stuff from it. Okay. So it's probably more of like a, a long term. I was going to say, like it'd take me a little while. Like, I'd be doing a lot of disco dancing. <laughs> <laughs> Star jumps. <laughs> Night fever. <laughs> Babies. <laughs> yeah, I've never got those. Never. They, they sound similar to uh, Kegel balls. Have you heard of them? Yeah. When, uh, pregnant ladies. Mm put them up there to strengthen the pelvic floor. Same kind of thing, I think, but these but obviously... The, but you've got to dance to make off. these ones work. Yeah, so these were originally made tiny and they went inside men's willies. Really? Yeah, I never knew that. Right, so hang on. Were they attached to each other or they like separate balls no, that you just put in? Balls. How did they get them out? Fuck knows. Probably a lot of people didn't, like lost them. Cause, right, okay. Let's think about this. We know that things disappear up bums because we've done that in a previous episode. And you'd think that with the force of going for a poo, that these things would come out with the poo and they don't. No. So if you're going to stick things down your knob, which hasn't got the same, you know, muscle structure as a bum hole to push things out. It's just, it's passive, isn't it? You just yeah. pee out your pee hole. It doesn't contract. It doesn't force things out. It just allows water to pass. Yeah. Sorry if I'm being a bit graphic. I'm just thinking out loud here, trying to process what I've just been told. So you're putting these little balls down your pee hole. Nothing is going to push them out. I don't know. Did they, are, are they made to stay there maybe? So when you're having a little a little wank, you feel the balls. I'm doing the motion. Sorry. When you... <laughs> I'm doing it behind the laptop. <laughs> Use your microphone. <laughs> No, no, I'm going to get really mad messages from people if I start doing that. People pay for me time and everything. They'll be writing in going, so 20 minutes in, if you can just wank your mic, I'll give you 20 quid. <laughs> That's actually a really good idea. Store that for later. So going back, so they put the balls out. I'm thinking maybe they stay there. So when you're having a little wank, I'm doing it again. Stop moving the hands. You feel the balls going up and down, yeah. Maybe. Maybe. The infection rate must yeah. have been really high. Medical hat on again. I'm like, give the guys antibiotics. Sorry, I'm just really surprised at this. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So go so on. So that was a shock for me when I read that. So that's where the um, so these, they were made originally so to put originated, down yeah. boys' pee pee holes. Men's. <laughs> Thank you so much for correcting me there. Oh my God. 
Okay, so men's pee pee holes yeah. and then the the developed into vag balls. Yeah. Someone's obviously thought, let's have a go with that. Okay. Let's make something like mean, Well, obviously, um, it's caught on because you can still get them in Ann Summers yeah, today. Yeah, they are really popular. Yeah. I mean, guys are still putting things down the knob, but I don't know about these little balls. Like, yeah. Maybe that's why sound and rods became a thing because they needed just to be able to get it out. Yeah. So I was going to talk about sound and rods. I'm not going to. It's another podcast again, yeah. isn't it? No, Google we're it. not going to do Google it. <laughs> yeah. Or pay me and I'll tell you all about sound and erotically. <laughs> So let's fast forward to the 17th century. That was supposed to be cheesy. Yeah. So 17th century and sex dolls were created. <gasps> okay. Tell me about sex dolls. So if I tell you that they were named Dames de Voyage. Oh, I thought you were going to say Tracy. No, nope. okay. not Tracy. <laughs> so Dames de Voyage is their, okay. their first known name. Yeah. What do you think they were used for? How did they become a thing? The name kind of gives it away. Um, so for uh, travelling salesmen to get the jollies off while they're away? Yeah. Oh, Lone, really? That lonely was a... sailors. Oh, okay, that was a guess. That was a good guess. Yeah. So they made their sex dolls from bundles of straw. Oh, dear me. So they tied... Them poor men. Like making making a guy fox. So tied it up with bundles straw. of string, loads of straw, and then dressed it in women's clothes. Oh, to keep God them loved them. They must have been desperate. I know. I mean, there's loads of the men on the ship that you can go and have fun with. Imagine Why? trying fuck to straw. fuck a straw. Oh, no. Like shagging a scarecrow. Itch. Isn't, oh, God. <laughs> Are you old enough to remember where's like homage? Yeah. And Sally. Yeah. I'm just so, picturing Aunt Sally now. Do you think they had like their own individual ones? Like, oh, that's, that's Tracy. That's um, my one. Yeah. Do you think they had like a communal one? I think they had a communal gangbanger one. Yeah. Yeah. Just gang bang the little doll. Soggy straw. Who goes last? Ah, oh, there'd be somebody who wants to go last. <laughs> the captain. The, the clean up. We're not going to mention who we think that would be. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know who you are. Clean up. Mm, bleep. Whoops. I think, I think we already named him once on a previous episode. Oh, did we? Um, oh, we did. We did. But we're not going to say it again. Sorry. No. So, yeah. The dirty sailors. So, we jump ahead. Um, we are up to the Victorian era. Oh, the Victorians were dead. I know, everything became a little bit industrialised and the first vibrator was created. Okay. So it was actually created for medical purposes. Yeah. Um, all sorts of reasons, like this will fix your sore neck, this will fix everything. Um, was it intended to go up your vagina to fix your sore neck? Yeah. Okay. So it was steam powered. Really? Now that to me so just your screams fella like is stoking up the fire. Ow. That's gonna while you're having the time of your life. You've ever had a burn off something steamy? I have, yeah, not yeah, on my flaps. Not very nice. I wouldn't want it. No. 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 I'd be so, I, I, so I need to know how the steam thing works. So literally steam powered everything, pump it up, and then off it goes, makes it ch -ch -ch -ch. So there's a little fire. Yeah. A little yeah. And you've got to stoke the fire. Mm. And it's attached somehow to like a tube. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a little steam and motor thing. It the motor. Is this a handheld dildo or is it like a fuck machine? Handheld, I think. I'm really going to have to stop being so expressive with my hands because I've just literally just done that. <laughs> I've talked about my expressive hands before and, and, and I'm sorry. So, okay, it's a fuck machine type I think thing. like a handheld It's version. a handheld? Yeah. So you do need both hands free. Yeah. So your your fella is gonna have to stoke it, the it, fire. It might be a joint. While you're okay, effort. stoke faster. <laughs> wow. More please. So this was patented by some American guy, um, and it was called the manipulator. Mm. It's quite a good name. It is actually. Yeah. I'd probably buy a manipulator. I would actually. Yeah. Um, and then there on in, vibrators were born, created and marketed as ways to help neck pain, massage, guns. Even now, if you go on Amazon and you say massager, yeah. Yeah. you find the doxy wand. You do find the doxy wand, yeah. Right, okay. So disclosure here. I have used a doxy wand, stop it, on my back. Yeah. And it really works. Okay. Um, a little bit of oil. Now, the problem is, is that, you know, when we do massage, it doesn't really end there. So it's like a little bit of foreplay, I suppose. But I have had... Um, 
a really bad back over the years, slip discs and everything. And uh, Jimmy's given me a good pummeling with the doxy and it really works. Mm. It does. So they're not lying. It's not false advertising on Amazon when they say yeah. this is a ma- massage. But it doesn't stop on your back, does it? it you can it work travels. your way down and have a lovely little time. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all um, all over Amazon and stuff, isn't it? So yeah. if you need a little massager, get mm-hmm. yourself for Amazon. Mm-hmm. So finally, we hit the 60s. 60s got filthy, didn't we? Oh, God. So the 60s, the 70s, sexual revolution. I think I was born the wrong era. Yeah. And people put the middle finger up to being ashamed of sex. Yeah, absolutely. Started living their best lives. Mm-hmm. So this is where loads of sex shops opened. Yeah. Um, became a bit more mainstream. And the ranges of sex toys that we get now began to grow. Um, loads and loads of sex enthusiasts in that time. And then everyone just got dirty. Yeah. So when the 90s came around, you've got shows like Sex in the City. Mm-hmm which I think opened everyone's eyes. And then you've also got the likes of the internet where everything's at your fingertips all the time. Mm -hmm. And it sort of took away that shame of having to walk into one of these seedy shops. Yeah, because they were seedy back in the day. Yeah. I mean, some of them still are. Some of them love to look like that, don't they? I'm not going to name one, but there's one in Liverpool. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's like blank windows and curtains and all that, you know. And... Uh, I mean, look at the industry we work in. There's just no shame. But no. on the few occasions I've nipped in for a little bottle of rush, I get out of the car and I look both ways. I'm yeah. like, what am I doing? Some... I can just walk into Ann Summers, which is on the high street with kids going past and yeah. everything. But the little private shop with its, with its curtains. I'm like, yeah. that look at both ways. And the virgin boy stood next to it, like yeah. dying to go in. But <laughs> yeah. Grab him by the hand. Come on, love, I'll take Come on, you mate, in. let's go. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, wow. I think the internet opens up a massive massive way for people to just yeah absolutely give things a try yeah um and obviously shows like sex in the city made made sex toys very very normal Mm. like i don't know a lot of people now who i know wouldn't necessarily sit around with their friends and say oh have you tried this no whereas we would yeah you know have you tried this toy because the boss yeah see i'm still quite surprised at how prudish some people are yeah because um, I think with our industry, we're just really open with what we say and we forget that not everybody else is. And we're not putting this on for this podcast. This is just us no, every this day. Is very normal. Normal conversation. And yeah, you know, we say words that other people might go, oh, we can't say that. Yeah. Or what are you talking about? Eve? What are you talking about that? That's just every day for us. Mm-hmm. And I do forget. I, I just talk in the pub sometimes and I know that that person, if they just overheard what I'm saying, thinking, what I get are told you off talking by said all the time. And Remember like, where you are. Yeah, well, I tell oh, Jim you shut off. off. It's not my gym, that's Or when I'm listening to your voice notes in the schoolyard. <laughs> I really should actually put a little warning on my yeah. voice note. Don't Disclaimer. listen in public. Not yeah. safe for work, sorry. Yeah, which is most of mine, really. Yeah. You should have known better. Oh, you? well. Yeah. So, what's your favourite sex toy? I knew you were going to ask me this. And it's a, de- it's a dead hard question to answer because I've got, I've got a lot and I've had quite a lot over the years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a little fact here that I don't think you knew. Okay. Because uh, I don't really talk about it very often. But my mum um, actually had a, a sex toy, naughty nighty type business um, in the early 80s before Ann Summers was a thing. I think I did know this. So Ann Summers back in the day didn't have shops. They used to do naughty nighty yeah. parties. So they'd come to your house and bring all the stuff. But my mum actually did that before, um, before Ann Summers. And her business was called Brief Encounter. <laughs> Um, and just going to our club, if you know, our tagline is called for brief encounters yeah. and that's where it comes from. So, yeah, I, this, do you know what? Nowadays it'd be really unacceptable. But I remember being nine, <laughs> sitting on my living room floor and my mum getting a, a delivery from the courier from a supplier in London of all of her, uh, you know, sexy underwear and sex toys and lube. And she had all these like striped bags with no name on and not staples. And she'd get her orders from her, her parties and she'd, she'd give me the bag and she'd hand everything over. <laughs> I wasn't even looking like at what I was. Like you on. Yeah. I didn't even know, you know, I was that young, I didn't know. But I was like, I've always loved stationery and I just loved the staple bit. <laughs> so there's my mum, you know, putting me on the production line of packing sex toys and striped bags. And I had no idea. All I wanted to do was staple a bag. How innocent was I? 
This will be now all the trolls you're feeding them. Oh, uh, whatever. No wonder she's fucked up. I know. <laughs> oh, I'm fucked up for a lot of reasons and that's probably one of them, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but my, oh, my favourite. Um, oh, my God, there's been so many. Now, Jim's been going to Amsterdam quite a lot over the past few years and the sex toys are over there are yeah. outstanding and he's brought some over. So before that, I probably would have said the Doxy because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's great. But... Um, he's bought this other one recently. It looks like a sperm. Okay. And it's, so it's got like a fat end and then like a little sort of tail and then like a little squishy end that you turn it on and off. And it's for males and females. Um, ah, it's a buzzy little fucker, man. It's really, really good. It looks innocuous. It's, it's like a purpley pink, which is nice. It feels nice and everything as well. Um, but... It's, it looks like it's going to go, no, yeah. wow. If you put it on the table, it, it, it jumps all over the place. <laughs> it, it's it's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shimmying across the table. So I think that is probably my favourite. Mm. What about you? So I think my go-to would be the Bond. Mm. Just because it's so quick and easy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but I recently got a unicorn. Okay. So is Have it you like... seen it? Have I showed you it? I don't know. It literally is like a little unicorn toy. Looks like a little... Is it a suction looks one? Looks like a My Little Pony. Is it a suction one? Yeah. Ah. But it's like, it's got the little mouth. It's like a little suction. Yeah. But then it's also got a tongue that comes out and... Shut it's up. It's boss. The yeah. little unicorn, like... Yeah. Little unicorn licks. Yeah. So you can um, put it on different settings, depending on what you want. It's, okay. It's just boss. Does it light up? Doesn't light up, <gasps> no. The manufacturers, you need to make the unicorn <laughs> thing light up. All right. What if you need to hide it? Like, and then, and then as you come in, walks it in needs, the room you're trying to. Yeah. Light up. And as you come in, it needs to like spray out glitter <laughs> all over your fandango. No glitter though. Glitter's banned. No, it's not banned in the house. I don't want it in my bed sheets. That sounds really cute, but I mean, if it, it lifts up, it'd it's just take it all level. And it's, it works. I love the way its little tongue comes out yeah. and flicks. I need the collection because there's actually a few different ones. Different colours. And they colours. do look like My Little Pony, all different colours, and they all do slightly different things. Oh, okay, little different buzzers yeah. and stuff like that. I've got a yellow one. Okay. Nice. So, yeah, okay, that. nice. So what I thought we could do mm -hmm. is ask people what their favourite toys are. Yeah. And if there's anything that we need to review. So <gasps> I know we've said. Yes. We can do that in the future. Okay, so if we're going to review these things, we'd have to use them. So... I need to just tell me, kids, just stop watching yeah. this right now because future episodes could possibly just be really naughty, dirty. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that'd be great. Um, you know, if um, so people something wanna... a bit different. Yeah, yeah. So not like your regular rabbit or even the doxy. I mean, the doxy is fabulous, but we all know it's fabulous. Yeah. We want to know about um, different unusual sex toys that you love and uh, you can like, put your name behind. Yeah guaranteed this is going to work and we can maybe give it a little go and a yeah. little review. Have you heard of Tracy's dog? Oh God, it's not a sex toy. It is a sex toy. But no, you... I don't do bestiality. No, it's not a dog. It's it's a bit similar to... It's um... called Tracy's dog. I know, but it's one of those sucky ones. But just have a look <laughs> at the reviews on Amazon. We can look at some of these. by Tracy's dog. Yeah. Oh, we God. can look at some of these when we do the review episode, but the reviews on Amazon are crazy. No. Yeah. Why is somebody called a sex toy Tracy's dog? It's just wrong on every level. Yeah. <sighs> but that's that, Tracy's dog. You've shocked me twice. <laughs> Anal leakage <laughs> and Tracy's dog. <laughs> Nancy, I'm, I'm done. I need to have a cup of tea and a little sit down. down. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so we're not into bestiality. We're not into necrophilia. Um, or boys' penises. And, oh, forgot about that as well. <laughs> it's all got a bit weird today. Okay, I think we need to finish there, don't we, before it descends into anything else before that's going to get, get us loads off. of complaints and get us into <laughs> podcast and jail. Okay, so I hope you really enjoyed that um, as much as we did. It was a lot of fun. Although um, we edged ourselves there, I think. We did. Definitely edged ourselves. Um, thank you so, so much for uh, watching, listening. Um, if you're listening to us on Spotify, you can watch us and see our beautiful faces over um, on YouTube. Um, hit up our socials, give us some likes, um, share our reels, our episodes. Please share the love because um, we're really enjoying ourselves. We want to carry on. And I think you're enjoying it too from the feedback that we've had so far. Most of you. 
most of you. Yeah. I think even <laughs> the trolls. No, I think even the trolls are enjoying it. Yeah. They just like to troll. They're still paying us attention. Exactly. Yeah, they're still helping. So troll away, sound. Um, so yeah, five star reviews where you can and get in contact with us. We want to hear from you. We've had some lovely messages so far. Um, but, you know, email us, um, medic at the path of cell podcast.co.uk and just chat to us and we might even give you a mention. You never know. But for now, that is it of episode three and we'll see you next time. Bye.